Hi right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Tonight, I wanna to show you my latest improvement. It's not only my improvement. My friend Ronnie helped me out with this one, but I'm gonna you know, take credit for the install anyway. Uh, but at the conclusion of the video, guys, if you're interested in this, I'll put a link down below. You can go check it out and get one for yourself. But I wanna challenge you, anybody, can you go from cutting with your machine to using a roller as fast as I can. I don't think you can, but uh, stick around for a minute. I'm gonna show you how fast I can do it. All right guys, so when I set out onto this build for Enclosure Zilla, I kinda had a plan and this little device this little function that I have now was part of the overall plan that I had. So I want to show you, cause I'm kind of proud of this. We'll do a little more in depth video later, but just to show you how this works and how it has made life much easier for me. And it's got me to where I don't avoid certain jobs anymore because now I can go from engraving normal stuff, cutting stuff out to doing tumblers in relatively no time at all. So I haven't got my entire system worked out yet as far as chuck placement and all that yet, but I have got it to where I can swap in a fraction of the time that it takes most machines. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that my machine is currently operating as it should as a standard Acer P20. So here we go. I'm gonna frame the uh, text that I have in the workspace. All right, there's the frame. I'm gonna run it back home because that's what a normal Acer would do that does not have a roller attached to it, right? All right. I'm gonna frame it one more time, guys. All right, so now I'm gonna pull a fast one on you guys right here. All right, you never saw this coming. <laughs> All right, lower the bed because you know, enclosure Zilla, you can do that. All right. Out comes the uh, chuck. Place the chuck in the work area. Raise the bed back up to get it to the appropriate height. All right. Got my little magic switch. I almost forgot. You almost, you almost got me. Flip the switch. All right. Now I'm going to frame on the roller. And there you have it, guys. And in case you didn't see that, let me get you a little closer here. This way you can see it. That's right, guys. It is using a roller. All right, so let's say another customer comes in and is like, they would like to have something that requires me not to use a roller. All right, step one, flip the magic switch. Lower the bed. Remove the chuck. Raise the bed back up. Return to my workstation. Home the machine and get ready for the next job. It's that fast, guys. Not sure exactly how fast that is, but as you can see, my machine is now operating back as a normal Acer P20, all right? One more time in case you missed it, guys, just to show you it's not a fluke. All right, I'm gonna run it out there frame just so you see that it's working the way that it should. All right, you got it framed. Move over to the machine, first step. Flip the switch, lower the bed. And guys, I have been working on getting this done for months and it is finally here. Uh, back in the tumbler business because I had been out for a while because it was just such a hassle. All right, there we go. Go back over to light burn and frame it up. And if you're not believing me yet, here we go guys. Sending the test burn. And like I said, I, I probably could have took a little more time and uh, 
line this up. Maybe made a little bit smaller letter, but uh, there we go. It does it in reverse order, which kind of scared me at first because I thought that was mirroring, uh, but it's not. It just starts and goes this way. Uh, I guess that's because of the scan angle. But uh, but yeah, there's that, guys. And I'm going to let this finish just so uh, I can show you convert it one more time just to show you how easy it is. And then I'll show you the nuts and bolts of this operation and tell you how you can do the same thing if you wanted to. All right, so test is burned. All right, to get this thing out of my way, guys, I'm gonna flip my magic switch. All right, going back to absolute coordinates, disabling the rotary, home of the machine, just like magic. All right, guys, so the cat's out of the bag now. Uh, Steve's gonna be a little jealous. All right, nobody tell him. But this is the secret. This is a secret weapon that I have, guys. Now this is a different board. Uh, Ronnie over, it sent me two different ones, and this thing was originally created uh, by a guy named Ronnie, and he created it for the X Tool D1. So that's the only caveat, the only workaround that I had to uh, to come up with was that the cable to go from the chuck to this board here, because it was originally made for the RA2, uh, and the port for the rotary on here is for an RA2. Well, luckily for me, I had an old X-Tool rotary laying around that I haven't used in forever and don't plan to since I've got this chuck and the bigger rotary and the drop bed over here. Probably not gonna be using the rotary on the X-Tool anytime soon. So the way this works, guys, is this is basically just a control board. And I'm gonna try to show it to you there. It's a control board with a switch on it, okay? Uh, as you can see, uh, Ronnie has developed this thing to work with different machines. You've got the Otour, you've got the, the, all the different machines, and then you've got these, these two right here connectors, which go to uh, the top one there is the X-Tool connector, and the bottom one's pretty much everybody else that uses the standard stepper plug, okay? Uh, the top right here, this, this is your axis. So you have to have uh, a jumper to go from there over to the stepper motor on your axis. And then you take the, the wire that comes from the controller goes into where it says laser on these bottom two holes. Uh, in my situation, I had to use the one marked other because I don't didn't have the plug coming from the controller to fit this one. And then the only caveat I had is the only plug that, that Ronnie made on these things is the plug for the RA2. Well, like I said, luckily I had a cable laying around from my old RA2, which is this. So all I did in essence is made an extension for the plug that goes to my HR uh, chuck, which is actually really convenient because now I don't have to worry about, you know, is the cord long enough to move all the way to this side of the, the workspace or this side? I got plenty of space. Uh, and I've, I've, I've used the little adhesive patch that Ronnie sends you. It's got like uh, some 3M like locking plastic, uh, some type, almost like Velcro, but better that Ronnie sends with it. I used it to attach it just inside, right below the stepper motor here to my enclosure. And like I said, I can either unplug the machine from that if I need to take it out for repairs, or I can just pull that little Velcro snap lock stuff apart and leave the board, uh, leave the board attached to the machine if I need to. Uh, but Ronnie sent me this thing a while back, guys, and I just hadn't had a, a, a op opportunity to really use it. Uh, I didn't do a whole lot of tumblers on the X2 anymore. Uh, mostly because it's an inconvenience and I've usually got all of my machines running cutting stuff uh, but with with the drop bed and enclosure Zilla rotary attachment got a lot easier because I don't got to pull the machine out put the legs on and prepare it to do rope to do tumblers so now all I've got to do flip a switch change a couple of settings in a light burn open the door set it up here uh, you know I've got the roller that goes with the uh, the answer as well and I've got a video coming on this stuff, guys, but I've had these things from Ronnie for a long time, and I had told him that I would try them out and let him know how they worked and tell everybody about it. And I think this is something that a lot of you guys may want to look into. And if you do, I'll drop a link down below to Ronnie's uh, Etsy channel, Etsy store, and uh, you can go on there and pick those up from him. Uh, nice guy, uh, does mostly into musical instruments, designs, and, and creations. But this was a pretty good little, uh, pretty good little piece of equipment that he's built for us laser folks. 
and it makes it a lot easier, especially if you have an enclosure like mine, where you can just store that thing away and don't have to worry about it getting in the way. Uh, it is herb season. My daughter's planting her herbs, and so I'm probably going to go pot shopping tomorrow. That didn't sound right, but I'm going to go buy some pots for flowers tomorrow. But until next time, guys, have a good day and be safe.